Hey guys, Jay here, and today I want to show you a little bit about the build that I have been playing from the start of the league. It is my backup plan for, not really a backup plan, but it is kind of an improvised character from the league start. I was not happy with the way that the the bleed gladiator gladiator is performing overall it's not bad it's just the skill delivery system of it is bad uh if i play a melee build right now i feel like i cannot play anything other than this freaking skill that is on the screen here and so at that moment i was having like a uh, roughly three divine and I decided to spend one in this build. Everything that you have seen here is around 120 chaos, which is less than a divine at the moment, at the current moment that I'm recording here. One divine is roughly 135. So let's just say the budget is one divine, right? And uh, you can see the performance here. It is a tier 16, nothing special. This is uh, a tier 16 from a Kirak mission, by the way. It's not like my tier 16. My tier 16 should have applied. Uh, maybe I should do it. Let me see if I still have any tier 16 left. I have not even finished with uh, getting all the the the, the uh, Atlas point. I'm around 80 points right now, I think. But it it is it is doing very very well. For the very, very minimal investment, the performance has been absolutely amazing. Granted that this one actually got carried a lot by the superior mechanic of the skill. So the skill itself, the Volcanic Fisher of Snicking, is an absolutely amazing skill. I just want to show you this very, very suboptimal setup and still can do a lot of shit. So that is the map, right? Maybe I would do one in the end of the video. Let me see if I have a really relatively high tier map. Do I have? No, oh, this is Grandmaster. 15 seems okay, right? Let me go ahead and find, let me see if it is, no, okay, it is not reflect. So right now, the only thing that I cannot do with this is reflect. And you already see the uh, gear screen over here, the inventory. So you know that I am playing the hollow palm technique. Uh, it is deck stacking, 840 decks right now. The gear is kind of bad. This chest I bought for... 30 chaos i think 30 35 it was the end of the stream uh, of my stream yesterday so 35 chaos uh this helmet is somewhere around 5 to 10 chaos this boost also somewhere around 5 to 10 chaos this ring here is the most expensive item in the build which is 30 equal to the chest i think this can be the the actual value should be like 50 60 but it just gives me a bunch of resistances and life and dexterity, which is what we want here. I do have some excess resistances, so you do not need that amount. So this ring can also be cheaper. And uh, we are having this uh, very, very shitty ring, just uh, dexterity, a lot of life, crafted resistant, 8% cold resistant on top of it is the worst roll that you can see, tier 8. This amulet... Nothing special again, just uh, a uh, tier 2 dexterity, tier 3 intelligence, tier 3 fire resistances, and crafted life. Divine judgment is the uh, anointment here. Uh, if you don't know divine judgment, it is this thing. 50% increased elemental damage. Uh, it's relatively cheap. The black oil is uh, 3 chaos-ish. The other twos are kind of free. So let's just say 5 chaos in anointment, right? 50, 50 uh, elemental damage, which is very good. All the gems are self-found except for this one, Vocalic Fisher of Snicking. I just buy it from the market. Without quality, it is 1 chaos. Uh, I'm not sure how much is the... Let me see. Gem Cutter... Gem Cutter Prism and Chaos 
so two chaos per gcb so probably you should be trying to buy a quality gem of fissures making it should be cheaper than buying gcp from the market or if you want to you can farm yourself uh, right so i bought a 20 percent. i think i bought it for 20 or 25k or something so the total cost is that 30 25 let's just say 25 so 55 this is a 30 again so that is 85 this amulet is uh, 5 chaos, that is uh, 90. This is 2 chaos, 92. This is 10 chaos, 102. This is another 10 chaos, and I am being very, very conservative on the price here. I am just using the maximum price that I thought it was. 5 to 10 chaos, I will put at 10, right? So 10 here is 112. This belt... What you care about is the 18% dexterity, which is 1k up. Uh, I bought it for 3. So let's just say 3. And that is 115 chaos. Well, the rest of it is self-found. Just random, no quality gem that I bought uh, or I get from the campaign. Or I bought from Lily in the vendor, in the gem vendor here. Flask, self-found. Everything else is self-found. Also, the last piece of the puzzle is obviously this jewel, right? This is 14 chaos. So, I am because I am maximizing all the, 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 all the other jewels. This is also self-found jewels. Pretty nice, but pretty much it is just life and some intelligence. Because I need intelligence. So, roughly one divine, right? Uh, from the prices that I bought, it is around one divine. And you already see the performance. The The ascendancy is not even that great. I I just start out as a gladiator. And so I pivot into just, I don't want to respect it, so I still be a gladiator. The good thing about the gladiator is, defensively, this is quite strong for this build, for the hollow palm, because... The hollow palm, as you can read on the text here, you count as dual wielding. So, in fact, you do not have any weapon or glove. You don't have any weapon, but you will benefit fully from all the block stuff that you can have for the dual wielding. And also, obviously, will be the bonuses here double. The bonus double here also gives you 20% more attack speed instead of 10. So it feels pretty good. The Vocal Fisher Snicking is a skill that only has 70% of base attack, but because we are, first of all, using Multi-Strike, so that is a lot of attack speed, we are having 20% uh, more attack speed from the double, for the dual wield bonus, that is double, and also we have additional 40% from the Hollow Palm technique itself. So it feels very good, your, your speed when going through map, it feels just like this, right? So it feels very good. And uh, yeah, basically everything here I take is very basic. You might see that this section of the skill tree is a lot of strength, but we still need uh, like 160 strength or something in order to use all the gems. So this is not wasted. My, my strength is only a little bit over from what I need. So this is entirely very, very good. What we are getting from this side of the tree is some block stuff here. Maximum block attack. Very, very nice. Block magic. Super comfortable for this build. This is probably the best time you can play Hollow Palm Technique ever. Because uh, right now, blood magic is a completely viable option compared to just uh, running auras with your mana. Uh, running auras with your mana and then use mana for attacking is still viable. But, and probably still uh, much better than this one. But... This is much, much more closer in terms of power compared to having a lot of auras. And right here, we are running Blood Magic, so we can run one aura here with Eternal Blessing. I choose Purity of Element. We are not having a lot of gear. So this one actually helps to solve two problems. First of all, it helps with resistances. Second, it does give you immunity to elemental ailments, so you don't have to deal with them. Super, super, super good. Very comfortable. Uh, rage here is a more multiplier, so we have this wheel over here, and then I have this, so we have Intimidate as well, 10% increased attack damage taken, 
and uh, we have uh, 36 rage here so while mapping we have 36% uh, more damage also work while boss as well just take a little bit of ramp uh, to get the maximum bonuses area of effect dexterity this one is a three node in order to get this critical strike do not inherit the ignite but 100% increased damage against ignited enemy so we have some chance to ignite here to make this happen very frequent this note the fire damage over time is useless but you can get two percent life recovery when you ignite a non-ignited enemy which give you like instant recovery in a lot of situation while you're mapping which is the majority of things that you do anyway keystone here versatile combatant we are taking here with the gladiator and a bunch of uh, block notes for dual wielding here one two and three we are I am four so we are cap block and cap spell block right took a little bit more passive than if you are using a shield but in the end the result is very 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 good we are having 68 percent chance to block attack and 65 to block spell and we have blockage on block and we have cap spell suppression because we stack dexterity so naturally using mage bane and then these two passive and uh, these three passive here allow me to have 100 percent spell suppression so actually i am super super tanky even though i have 4k life and uh, not a lot of armor actually only 3k but most of the time i don't even get hit for general mapping until tier 16 i am super super tanky very very rarely rarely die that is why i am able to reach a decent level without a lot of playing time right uh, i'm getting the life uh, obviously whenever i can uh, some elemental stuff here this is one important thing right uh 40 physical damage converted to coal and i am taking these three notes over here to get this mastery so we have a bunch of physical as extra coal 14 percent to be specific and then we convert 40 percent to coal the skill Vocative Fisher of Snicking is by default 60% fire and 40% physical if you use a physical weapon or deal physical damage in the first place. So we are converting the rest of it into coal. So we are full elemental. And with this setup, you are having roughly 50% uh, fire and 50% coal damage. These two kind of damage being almost the same means you always, always will have 100% uptime of Trinity, one of the one of the strongest damage support gem in the game, and yeah, basically I think I build around Trinity. It should be very very good. What can you do with this uh, setup in a? Can you do with this setup in a different build? Well, literally, if you remove these three points and you take these three. You can be a warden, and I think a warden is probably the best setup for this uh, build because with the warden you can have the very OP freeze node. So with half of your damage and it's a pretty big amount of damage, you will freeze everything on the screen. You will do it without a question, and it's for two seconds. Here, while I'm mapping, I'm already very very safe with all the freeze, and then because the monster is freezing, they do not attack very often, and we have block lucky block suppress on top of that we very rarely very rarely get hit and that just results in a very very comfortable playstyle. the clear is amazing the single target is okay not very amazing but that is not the main focus right uh is there anything else that is worth talking about i think the other stuff i will leave a link into the current character pob uh, probably not really current if i leave a pob by the way right if i leave a pob i will leave a pob to the warden so i would switch out this one get this one and get a proper ascendancy that actually is good for this build just knowing that with warden you can get scorch you can get freeze you can get tincture if you want you can get bark skin on top of all the layers of defense that you are having instead of having lucky block you can have also the, the the very very high elemental button press stuff to deal with single target right so warden i think is the best choice for this particular setup 
So if I leave a POB, I will change it into exactly the same except for one, two, three points. I will take it out and one, two, three points here. And it is perfectly the exact same build, right? So yeah, last but not least, let me actually, oh, did I open this pit? I think I did, right? Yeah, I think I opened this pit. Let me just give you another run of the map. Maybe the whole map is a little bit long, but as you can see, you can just attack here, get, uh, like ahead of you in a little bit. Oh, shit, why is this guy taking not taking any damage? Okay, this is a dead end. <laughs> Every single time, right? This is a dog shit map, but again, I am progressing, so I cannot be picky on the map. I have to run everything. I am still at 81. Okay, Alva. This is normally what I do. I probably will make yet another video on running Tempo and Alva, because this league, even though the Tempos is not as expensive as for the league, uh, like the previous two leagues, the Tempos are close to one divine for the double corruption. But everyone is making a lot of money then. But this league, everyone is not making as much money. So comparatively, this is still a very, very good money-making strategy for, like, newer player or player who doesn't have, like, a very strong character yet. Because technically, you can do this in Tier 1 now. And the, the result, the, the, the tempo that you sell, have the exact same price as if you do it in all tier 16 and it's very consistent so far i have run probably like 14 or 15 temples total completed temples all of them either have gem cutters uh so duriani's institute which is the double corrupt a gem room which is uh, 35 chaos and or they have the Corruption Chamber, which is the one that is going to help you double corrupt an item. That is also 35 kits. So every three maps, I am generating for sure 35 kits. I normally sell it for 34, so it sells quickly. But that is the, 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 the general idea. Why am I not seeing the Blight? Where is my Blight? Anyway, this skin counter is pretty much like a blight, right? You protect the thing in the middle. As you can see, nothing even get close. The blight monsters are stronger, but they move much slower as well. So, you think I, I think you got my idea, right? You just stand basically in the middle. Maybe if you want to, you can build one, two, couple of towers for like slowing, but normally it's not even necessary. The only thing for Blight that I'm not being able to do right now is getting the note for, for for a chance to have a lane full of bosses. And let me show you that note after I kill this bitch. Why the hell is this guy so goddamn tanky? He is uh, cursing me. Hey, let's just leave it. Again, one divine build, so there are a lot of freaking rooms for improvement in terms of damage, in terms of gearing. All the shit I've been using for now are still very, very bare bone. I would say the only best in slot thing that I have right now, not even technically best in slot, but almost best in slot thing that I have right now is a 2020 Volcanic Fisher of Snakey. That is the only thing. Every other thing can be upgraded on the build, like massively upgraded, not even like close. Uh, right. Okay, chest full of gems here. Uh, we are in the first wave, so I will take it. So there's a very, very high chance that I can have it again in the next two maps. And yeah, just kill it. The skill here, mechanically, Vokery Fisher is nicking, I think is hands down the best melee skill in the game. And maybe even competitive for the best skill in the game overall, in terms of efficiency. If you have a freaking proper 
like damage stacking setup for this thing. I did it in the past, by the way. You can have some kind of quality stacking. You can get like one single slam here. It will not one single slam like this. It will travel and erupt seven times. Maybe you can do even eight without using enhance. And it basically can reach like two, three screen, not, not two, three, four screen away. Right now with three, it already travel way, way above the first screen. So you can potentially just clear everything while standing in the middle of a very big area. Okay, here is the blight. I will not be building any uh, towers or some or anything. I want you to see, pay attention a little bit to the minimap. I'm not sure how to zoom it in right now, but I think you can see, right? So here, there, there, there are the, the, the monster, the red dots over here, right? If you just stand in the middle and just slam, those red dots normally cannot even reach your, your screen. I'm using a regular screen here. A white screen, sure, you might see them. Okay, they are in the, the corner here, but because they spawn in the screen, you can just off screen the whole encounter by holding down one single button. Just like that. The only thing that I am having some limitation in terms of flight is... Uh, wait a minute, let me show you here. Okay, it's this node over here. If you have more damage, you can do this one. But for now, for the current very budget, very cheap setup, I cannot have enough damage to effectively deal with that encounter yet. At least with this build. But just so you know... If you are having a higher damage setup, if you are, you know, having more budget into a build and you are playing in melee, consider this skill. It is amazing. I cannot recommend it enough. For example, here. You can hide in a corner if you like to. I actually don't need to because my defense is actually pretty good. But you can. That is an option. Extra safe. If you are a warden, you don't have as high of a block, but you have way higher duration for freezing. It evens out, in my opinion. Maybe if you want simple life, you will do bark skin. If you want a little bit of uh, tincture management, you might have to take the the tincture stuff over here and and then work with it because it will drain your life. Um, yeah. Anyway, oh, I'm not sure if tincture will work. I don't think tincture will work because you do not have a weapon here, right? But the worst case scenario, you are having bark skin. Because you are not going to shock anything because you have no lightning damage in here. So what the fuck is slowing me down here? Right. As you can see here, I stand in a lot of shit. And uh, yeah, I do not take that much damage. Something that is uh, dangerous to the build is probably, I would say, I'm not even pressing on the flask here. The flask here are not properly set up because I don't see that it is necessary. Normally, it's just a one-button build. If you want to speed up things here, I do have a second button that you can press. We are not counting the movement skill, right? But the second is Arcanist Brand. It is currently linking to two things. So the first thing is a curse. And because of the color limitation, I am having punishment. I think it's probably is a good curse too. Um, and the second one is frostbolt. Having exposure for this build is hard because you are dealing half half, right? So not entirely easy to have exposure. But I choose frostbolt because its co exposure is still somewhat useful for the co damage. But it also have a uh, reduced regeneration rate, which is very, very good. And uh, yeah, sometimes you have high life uh, target with regen. You can bring down the Arcanist brand. It will cast a frost bomb for you. It will give you some exposure. It, it will cast a curse for you. And your life will be pretty damn easy, I would say. 
So yeah, I will make sure to leave the POB that I will import directly from this character, by the way. So all the shitty gear here is going to be in the POB. I will be changing the Ascendancy class into the Warden because if someone for some reason want to start out and try to play this build from scratch, I would recommend a Warden. I leveled up as a Gladiator for another reason. And so, long story short, Warden is probably the best one. Hollow Palm technique for a budget build, super, super good, right? That is everything I want to share with you in this video today. So please do leave a like if you think this is helpful or interesting to you in any way. And I will see you in the next video or on stream. I will be streaming every day from Monday to Friday from now until the leak dies, which is that probably this leak, I think, will probably die in three months, right? So when the ne ne next leak is coming, so probably I will be streaming forever. I don't know. Hopefully that is going to happen, but I will be streaming regularly. That is what I want. I, I try. I'm trying to say here. Like, subscribe, and peace. Like and subscribe.